Okay, geometry students, welcome to lesson three of unit one. And the focus of this lesson is going to be on angle relationships. So uh, pairs of angles um, and how they relate to each other. And we're going to be talking about congruent angles, uh, angle bisectors, uh, special pairs of angles. There's a few of those and uh, perpendicular lines, which of course, or as we'll define in this lesson, uh, are going to produce right angles, which we defined uh, last lesson as an angle equaling 90 degrees. Okay, so we're going to start off with three definitions and what we're going to do for each of these is draw a sketch. Um, and the idea of the sketch is to make sure that we uh, understand uh, exactly what the definition uh, says. So uh, do you remember I mentioned before you will have a theorem sheet, but uh, the theorem sheets will contain uh, all of the theorems, uh, uh, postulates, um, a lot of the formulas, most of them in fact, um, but they do not contain definitions. And so like I've mentioned in the last couple of videos, definitions are the language of geometry and you really need to make sure you can speak that language, you're familiar with the definitions uh, and terms uh, so that you can understand exactly what the theorems are and are not saying. Okay, so let's start off adjacent angles. Uh, it's two angles in a plane, so we know that they're coplanar, there's a pair of them. They have a common vertex and a common side but no common interior points. Okay, so adjacent angles, uh, they don't have any, you, you'll notice there's no mention of any particular size of angle, and so there's no fixed measure. And so if something is adjacent, it doesn't guarantee its measure, but if you know the measure of the angle, it doesn't mean it cannot be adjacent. Okay, so basically what's gonna happen is we're going to have uh, one angle over here. Um, I'm gonna name that A, B, C and so we've got angle ABC and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in uh, another ray over here and I'm going to put D over there and angles ABC and CBD are adjacent angles so that's angle ABC and angle CBD and what you're going to notice from this hopefully is a couple of things first of all that B is common to both of them. Uh, you should also notice that ray BC is a side in both of the angles. Uh, and then uh, what we should finally notice is that angle ABC includes all degrees between uh, those two rays. Uh, angle uh, CBD includes all angles, uh, all degrees between those two rays, but uh, there is no overlap between the two angles. So I'll give you an example of a pair of angles which are not adjacent and so if I had angle ABC and angle ABD sorry I left off the angle symbol let me just add that in there quickly uh, and angle here we would have angle ABC which would be this angle angle ABD would be this angle and the problem is that there's overlap between the two and you can see from the definition there should be no common interior points so that would not be a pair of adjacent angles. Okay, a linear pair. A linear pair by definition is a pair of adjacent angles, so immediately it's using uh, the definition from above um, with uh, uh, non-common sides that are opposite rays. Again, opposite rays is a definition uh, that we used uh, in, uh, I think it might have been the first lesson or possibly the second one. And so first of all, um, uh, I'm going to draw opposite rays, and so opposite rays look like this. They effectively form a line. Uh, it's two rays that are collinear that have the same starting point or ending point and go in opposite directions along the same line. So those are my opposite rays, um, and then I'm going to draw in my uh, common side. So this is going to be the shared side. So these are my two angles. Uh, this is the first angle over here, the second angle is this angle over here. And so what you can see immediately that they are adjacent angles. They've got a common vertex, a common side, and no common interior points. Um, but the difference being uh, they um, are a linear pair, which means they are a pair of angles that lie on a line. And therefore, I'm going to name these this time with numbers. So that's angle 1 and that's angle 2. And what you can conclude from this is that angle 1 plus angle 2 must be 180 degrees. 
because they're a linear pair, which means their angles on a straight line. And we know from the previous lesson that a straight angle, an angle on a line, totals 180 degrees. Okay, what you may not assume is that either of these angles is 90 degrees. Even if I had drawn it to appear that way, that is not uh, necessarily true. It could be true, but you can't be sure that it's true. Okay, and then we have vertical angles, uh, non-adjacent angles. And again, so if you don't know the definition of adjacent angles, you have problems with both a linear pair and vertical angles. So they're non-adjacent angles formed by intersecting lines. Uh, and this is their characteristic, uh, that vertical angles are in fact congruent to each other. So what I need is intersecting lines. Uh, when the lines intersect, uh, this is their point of intersection. I'm going to name the four angles that it creates, angle 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what it creates uh, is two pairs of vertical angles. Each pair is congruent. Uh, and so you can see from those markings that indicates that angle 2 equals angle 4, angle 1 equals angle 3. Again, we don't know how big they are. We just know that they're equal to each other. They may or may not be 90, but you may not assume that information. Okay, and then we move to uh, the next definition, perpendicular lines. Those are lines, but they can also be segments or rays, and they intersect at right angles. And so this is your symbol, again, part of the language of geometry that you're going to need to learn. Um, and so if AB is perpendicular to CD, then what's going to happen is this. You're going to have line AB and line CD, and they are going to intersect each other at 90 degrees. Uh, of course, that creates a vertical angle, which is 90 degrees. Uh, and then we can use the property that says uh, a linear pair must add up to 180. And if one of them is 90, of course, that's going to be 90. And then we can reuse the property that says vertical angles. And so effectively, perpendicular lines create not one, but four right angles. Okay, so now we're going to uh, determine if uh, the following statement is uh, sometimes always or never true. A linear pair of angles forms perpendicular lines. So I alluded to that above already. Um, we have the following instance. Um, so I'm just going to draw that in there and erase this. Okay, uh, take a little more of that off. So this is our linear pair that is a pair of adjacent angles on a straight line. It is possible that angle 1 is 90 degrees, and if that's true, then angle 2 will be 90 degrees, because if it's a linear pair, it's a pair of angles on a line. And as soon as you have a pair of angles on a line, that means your total angle is 180 degrees. Uh, what we need to account for, however, is this possibility. And that is that angle 1 and angle 2 are on a line. They add up to 180 degrees, but they are nonetheless not 90. And so uh, uh, the statement is sometimes true. Uh, it could be true, but not necessarily. Okay, let's move to a couple more definitions, complementary and supplementary angles. Again, complementary, you must pay attention to the details. It's two angles. You'll notice what's missing that was in many of the definitions above. So over here, we had adjacent angles that showed up in the next definition, as did uh, vertical angles, it said non adjacent. In this particular case, we're talking about complementary angles, it's two angles with a measure that have a sum of 90 degrees. Okay, so they're not necessarily adjacent angles, uh, they could be non adjacent, that's not specified. And so either is possible. Supplementary angles, it's a pair of angles, and their sum is 180 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to do an example which shows how that might show up in a problem. Uh, so we've asked, been asked to find the measure of a pair of supplementary angles. Again, make sure you are writing down what the information is telling you. Supplementary means adds up to 180 degrees. Uh, one of the angles is 28 degrees larger than the other. So what I'm going to do is call my first angle X. That means the second angle will be X plus 28. So 28 degrees larger than the first. And since those angles are supplementary, that means they add up to give me 180 degrees. 
and now I'm just going to go ahead and solve that linear equation. Okay, and so here we can see I've just solved that. I, I uh, uh, manipulated the equation to isolate x. We found that x was 76. x, of course, represents one of the angles. The other angle we add, 28, and we have our two angles of 76 and 104. We should add those and make sure they equal 180, just to, to double check that we haven't made a careless error. Okay, moving on. And so this is worth reading. I've already alluded to several of these. Uh, you need to understand that when you're given a diagram, and along with that you'll be given some information which will hopefully help you, but there are certain things you're allowed to assume and most things you are not. And so I'm going to pay careful attention to the cannot. I think it'll be a little more obvious what you can, and I would suggest you do read through this list and make sure you understand. And so what you're not allowed to make an assumption of is that there is a 90 degrees unless you've been express, expressly told that this is the case. What you're not allowed to assume is congruency of angles. And so even though these two angles appear to be congruent to each other, you may not make that assumption. Um, in this particular case, uh, we do not have any vertical angles because we don't have the intersection of two lines. We've got three rays and one line. Um, you may make the assumption that GJ is a line, that GH and J are collinear, and basically that's all you're allowed to assume. Likewise, you're not allowed to assume congruency of any of the segments. Okay, let's move to the next example. And so, given that you're not allowed to make these kinds of assumptions, let's go into this diagram over here and just use what we know for sure. So what we know, the only thing, as I mentioned, that we are allowed to assume in this case is it appears to be, and therefore may be assumed to be, the intersection of three lines. And so I'm highlighting the three lines in the different colors over here. So we do have the intersection of three lines. That, of course, if we have lines, allows us to conclude that we can have uh, linear pairs. It also allows us to use the rule for a straight angle, which is to say that the angles on a line add up to 180 degrees. Okay, we can use this information over here, of course, that we are given that this is perpendicular, which means that this is 90 degrees. Since we have intersecting lines, we can use the uh, rule that says uh, vertical angles are congruent to each other because vertical angles are formed by the intersection of lines. And so this allows us to conclude that angle B is going to be equal to 90 degrees because it's vertically opposite um, the uh, perpendicular. Uh, we can make the assumption also that angle D, or not the assumption, the conclusion rather, that angle D is equal to 32 degrees for the same reason. It's also vertical. Uh, and then uh, in order to find angle A, we can use the fact that the three adjacent angles on a line must add up to 180. And so angle A is going to be 180 less the 32 less the 90 uh, to give us 58 degrees, and once we know what angle A is, uh, you can hopefully recognize that angle A is uh, vertical to angle C, and we are able to conclude, therefore, that angle C must be the same as angle A, which is 58 degrees. Okay, and let's move on to our final example. A minute and a half to go. Again, watch out for assumption. Do not assume anything, and so because of the way this is drawn, most people assume that any one or all four of these angles is in fact 90 degrees. In this particular case, they are not 90 degrees. Um, uh, at least you can't assume that they're 90 degrees. And so we must use another relationship that we can be sure of. <clears throat> the only one that we can be sure of is that these two angles are adjacent angles on a line uh, and therefore add up to 180. And that is the equation uh, that I'm going to use in order to solve for x. Uh, so 2x minus 11 plus x plus 32 must be equal to 180 degrees. I'm just going to pause for a moment and solve that. Okay, and so I've solved uh, the equation. x is 53. I've substituted that back in to get a measure of 85. That means this angle over here is 85. Uh, substitute in here, this is 95. And then we can conclude that this angle must also be 95 again because of vertical. And now the last piece is to solve for y. And so we're going to solve the following equation. 3y plus 5 is 95. 
And there we have our y value of 30.